Alright, so I'm gonna start with the rabbit fire round. At what age do you want to retire? <laughs> uh, 80. How long does it take you to get ready in the mornings? Uh, something like between half an hour and an hour. Most embarrassing moment of your life? Oh, I cannot. I cannot tell. That's a pass. Favorite color? Red. What time of day are you most inspired? The morning, definitely. How many hours of sleep can you survive on? Uh, three hours. Fill in the blank. An upcoming technology trend is blank. Uh, innovative. The city in which the best kiss of your life happened. Leo. Pick one, Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk. Up to say, Elon Musk, let's say. The biggest mistake of your career. Uh, feeling that I'm invincible. How do you relax? Uh, usually I'm doing sports, mountain biking or hiking, many stuff. How many cups of coffee do you drink per day? Something like 10. A habit of yours that you hate? Um, smoking. The most valuable skill you've learned in life? Listening to people. Your favorite Netflix show? Uh, Mercredi. The last movie that you watched and that was memorable? Oh, um, I pass. The last song you listened to that you liked? Uh, yes, it was uh, from Wax Taylor. I don't remember the song, but it's a really nice. Uh, this this one you can obviously pass. Can you hum the tune? Can I what? Hum the tune. Uh, uh, no, I pass. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of the rapid fire. Uh, we could see fun. <laughs> Is there any rapid fire question that you want to elaborate on in more detail or do you want to move on to the longer questions? No, let's go to the longer question. Okay. So can you share with us your journey in the Internet of Things industry from the early days of M2M to the current state of IoT? How has the industry evolved over the past 15 years? Yeah, so I've seen the old journey from machine to machine uh, to to the IoT and... Uh, uh, you know, first we had to, it, it was like always the same principle to gather some data. So it could be from sensors, for example, uh, and send the, this data to, uh, to an internet platform. Uh, so the principle was always the same, but at the beginning we had to uh, just create the protocols, create the gateways, create the technology. So uh, to to be able to, to do that. Uh, so it was a long and difficult uh, work. Uh, it was really low level. So you have to understand like the electronics and you know, low level uh, development. And little by little, I've seen that there was more and more startups, uh, more and more gateway that was multi-protocol, more and more IoT platform in the market. And now it's like crazy. We have like six, more than 600 IoT platform in the market. Uh, we have a bunch of startups uh, that are taking care of the cybersecurity, that are taking care of the reliability of, uh, of uh, the communication. So we came to a really uh, homemade uh, solution to a really industrial and even it's close to be a commodity. So, I mean, in few years, we will not talk about IoT anymore. I can see that in few years, it will be just nothing. We don't mention that because it will be just a commodity. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned cybersecurity, but besides that, what are the main challenges that companies face when implementing IoT solutions? And how do you address them at Volvo Group? Yeah, if, if I talk about... Uh, 
industrial IoT. Uh, so really the IoT for the industry 4.0 because it's really my, my domain. One of the biggest challenge is the heterogeneity of, uh, of the, the equipment, of the industrial equipment in factories. Because it's quite easy to, uh, to do I IoT if you, for example, if you are Tesla, so you are building a new factory uh, from scratch. But most of industrial uh, companies are working with old factories. So we have like brand new technology and really old technologies and everything has to work together. And that's one of the biggest challenge. Could you provide some examples of IoT deployments at Volvo Group and how they have improved operational efficiency or customer experience? Yeah, we have deployed I mean, tens of, uh, of solutions uh, in production now, but uh, one of them, it's one of the first that I really like is, um, is a solution to geolocate our trucks. And uh, basically, uh, if you are on a factory yard, it's pretty hard to geolocate your trucks because even if a truck is a big, uh, is a big thing, uh, is a big vehicle, uh, we have uh, several hundreds of trucks on a huge factory yard and most of them are, are white. So it, it's quite difficult to, to find the right one for, uh, for a worker. So what we have done is uh, we have uh, deployed a solution to geolocate the, the trucks in real time. And uh, we have deployed this solution in 17 uh, factories. Uh, so it's a quite big deployment. So uh, we are geolocating uh, several thousands of trucks every day. And um, it brings a lot of value for the business because before this solution, they were writing down uh, the position of the trucks on the, in the factory yard. Uh, so it takes time for the, for the worker to do that. And there was a lot of mistake. So when one mistake happened, it, took, it takes something like two hours for two people to find the right track. Uh, so it was a big waste of time. And, um, and uh, it's so comfortable for the worker to always have the, the position of the truck in real time. They don't make any mistake anymore. It's like super easy and it brings a lot of value. With the increasing connectivity of vehicles then, how do you ensure the security and privacy of data transmitted through IoT networks? Well, basically um, we are just following the, the state of the art uh, for the cyber security. Uh, as I said before, now there's a lot of uh, standouts and uh, it was not like at, at the beginning of IoT, there was a lot of startup, a lot of small company that were launching, uh, I would say gadgets uh, or, or devices that was easily hackable. Uh, but now it's not the case. If you follow the right uh, policy, if you follow the rules, and uh, if you have a, a state of the art in the cybersecurity, you're not 100% safe, but you have a good level of security quite easily, I would say. So as the IoT community lead at Volvo Group, how do you foster collaboration and knowledge sharing among more than 200 people working on the IoT initiatives? Yeah, it's, it's always a, a big challenge to um, uh, to for for this community to keep it alive and um, so we have several uh, channel uh, for example uh, we are we have a yammer uh, channel to just share some fun stuff uh, any progress that we are doing we have also uh, a sharepoint to have uh, like the official document and uh, and the official uh, status of the of the project and initiative uh, but uh, we have also uh, we are also using Stack Overflow uh, for the forum for more uh, question stuff. Uh, we are using Confluence for a wiki, so um, more a wiki way of, of talking. And we are also using newsletter, uh, so a monthly newsletter sent by email uh, to keep uh, members informed. And um, you know, one of the biggest challenge if you want to build a community globally uh, is to have a relay all over uh, the countries. So 
for some countries I have good relay and it works really well. Uh, for some other the relay is more weak and it works uh, a, a little bit. Uh, it, it's a little bit harder. So that's always a big challenge. And um, I can say that uh, it's a success because uh, there's more than 200 people and they are always uh, listening to, uh, watching the video, listening to the podcast, reading the article. So it works really well. And one of my biggest challenge is for people to, uh, to uh, push people to produce uh, content. So when you produce content, it works. Uh, a lot of consumer, but less producer. That's always a big challenge. So the 5G IoT market is projected to grow significantly in the coming years. What are the key factors contributing to this accelerated growth and what opportunities does it present for businesses? Well, the, you know, the 5G, I can see a big uh, interest for autonomous vehicle and we're working a lot uh, for uh, having autonomous vehicle, especially in the construction equipment. Uh, because it's uh, it's easier than on the road, um, but for the industry, really, we have so much to do before 5G that uh, it's not going to be like a revolution uh, for me in 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 the few coming uh, years. So, can you then share some insights into the potential benefits and challenges of implementing IoT in the transportation and logistics sector? Uh, yeah, so um, in logistics, I mean, that's, uh, that's a domain where uh, the IoT can bring a lot of values. And uh, I have the feeling that we are just at the beginning uh, because being able uh, to track any assets, so it could be, you know, it could be a packaging, it could be the product inside the packaging, or uh, it could be rack, it could be a different kind of, uh, of things. Um, at Volvo, we have a crazy uh, logistic flow. Uh, you cannot imagine uh, the number of logistic flow to build one truck. Uh, so that's um, that's a huge challenge for us, and uh, we are working on it. We are working hard to uh, to have a good uh, track and trace solution uh, for for the logistic. And uh, yeah, I'm convinced that it will bring a lot of value in the future. So what is there something exciting about it that you are currently working on? Um, well, I'm working on, on, a, on a big solution, a big tool to deploy in all Volvo factories. Uh, and this tool will help uh, shop floor people to connect any industrial equipment, to visualize any data, and to be notified on any condition, any specific condition that they will uh, defy. So it's, it's like giving all the, the power of IoT uh, into uh, people without any IT skills, they will be able to, to use it without any uh, development skills. Okay. How's the evolution of the automotive industry with IoT influencing the 5G IoT market? What are some specific use cases where 5G and IoT are revolutionizing the automotive sector? Well, uh, definitely the autonomous vehicle uh, is the, uh, the next revolution in, uh, in transportation. Uh, and uh, also another really important thing is for the transportation to be as a service. Uh, so, you know, uh, Volvo will not sell trucks in 10 years, they will sell kilometers and uh, that will be a tremendous shift in the way of doing our business. And so how can businesses and organizations overcome the challenges of uh, fully leveraging the potential of 5G IoT? So yeah, you know, the analysts said that uh, more than 70% of uh, the IoT initiative failed uh, and it always for the same reason. Uh, we can see that uh, we are doing a mistake with the organization uh, because we didn't collaborate enough between the IT and the OT uh, community. So uh, we have to build a better organization for that. 
Uh, a second reason is uh, to skill up people because it's new technology and uh, you don't, you need to to train people for that. And uh, the the first uh, the third reason and uh, it, it's not the the least. Uh, it's to have some foundation. So um, if I talk about IoT, I mean everybody in your company should work on the same platform using the same protocol so they can share uh, they sh can share their knowledge and they can really build something together that's really an important thing okay uh, are there any emerging trends or technologies in the iot space that you find particularly exciting or promising for the future of the industry yeah, all the technology around positioning, uh, you know, we have the Wi-Fi 6, uh, LoRa is, uh, is coming with a new, a new technology for the positioning. We have also more and more satellites uh, of our, uh, in the sky. So all this positioning technology are going more and more accurate and also less and less expensive. Uh, so I, I think that's really, really exciting. All right, so the last question for you is of a personal kind. What would you be doing in your life if not this right now? Wow, that's the right question. I'm really passionate about what I'm doing, so... <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Gardening, windsurfing, nothing comes to... Oh uh, yeah, sure. I can, you know, live in the mountain and just uh, enjoy the life. <laughs>